بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين. As we close up, inshallah, the panel, I appreciate all of you here today, those who've been here patiently, mashallah, through this program, and also those who are online, and those who might watch this afterwards in the recording. My deep gratitude and thanks as I kind of do a summary in closing here and take some questions, just a summary of what the panel has been to Dr. Ariana, thank you so much for the explanation really of a very important understanding of what is substance abuse, understanding from the medical model, understanding of recovery, and how exactly you go about that. She broke it down so beautifully, step by step, to really help us understand what is this illness? How do you treat it? How do you go about it? And then I love, thank you so much, for tying in the discussion around, you know, that the Muslim community, Muslim communities have actually done this before. This is not new. Not historically, and not in current modern uh, Muslim communities and bringing, of course, a very American reality of the, mashallah, the work of Malcolm X and all of those who are part of the Nation of Islam, the Wadi Muhammad movement, and onwards and onwards, mashallah, that have continued this work. And so that kind of conversation ties in so lovely to what you're saying, Sheikh Rami, and what you have said, Muna, thank you both for your conversation, where Muna took it from the academic side, kind of looking at the research around this, what exactly has been done and the major gaps. I mean, major gaps in understanding. I'll tell you this as somebody who, alhamdulillah, is the researcher that's in charge of this lab in the first place, that honestly, as we look through the work, there's very little. And people say, what's happening with Muslims in America? Well, it's such a, ta speaking of taboo and stigma, that this is almost like, we call these stigmas within stigmas, right? The larger stigma of mental health and within it the stigma here of substance abuse. And if you look at this, it's really hard to sort out and even be able to accurately tell you what exactly is happening with Muslims that are American with substance abuse. We don't have the, the knowledge. We don't have the data. We don't even have data points to tell you exactly. Very, very similar to some of the work that I'm sure you're familiar with that we did just recently on the topic of, also a difficult topic in the Muslim community, suicide. Stigma within a stigma. Right? And when you start to actually put the research and get anchor and data points and be able to say, this is the reality, then you can go, and I was trying so hard to compose myself, Shahram, as you mentioned about, <laughs> speak directly to the camera and the board, but it's not just the board of this particular masjid, but actually the boards of all masajid across the US, anybody who's in a position of power and authority and leadership to say, stop sticking your head in the sand. It doesn't work that way. These are issues that are part and parcel of our community, just as they are with any other community of human beings. It's a human issue, right? And so therefore, we find very solid solutions. And thank you, Shah Rami, for sharing about the stories directly at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll remind us just very quickly as we wrap up, kind of in thinking about this, that the Sahaba, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, put the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a living example and embodiment of Islam literally called the walking Qur'an. How exactly do you implement the rules of Islam? He gave us a human being, a person, to show us how you do that. And then a community around him, which we call the Sahaba, right? the Sahaba and Sahabiyat, male and female, to actually commune together, to live together, to figure out what are all of the issues. And it is no exception that within all of the Sahaba and Sahabiyat, you find every single every single minor and major sin, and every single illness, and every single struggle that humans go through has actually been documented in the Sahaba and Sahabiyat. We do this strange thing sometimes as Muslims where we like put on these rose-colored glasses and we romanticize the Sahaba, and they were just these, you know, and they were, they were mountains, no doubt, every single one of them but they also had human conditions and struggles that they went through. And in those interactions with the Prophet Wasallam and with each other, we learned so much of what you do, the guide, the living guide of what Islam is meant to actually embody. We have beautiful guides, but we tend to not use them as much, right? So a lot of the work that we're doing actually is a revival. It's kind of going backward and reviving that historical understanding and putting it into modern practice. So with that, inshallah, I'll pause here in kind of the summary of what we've talked about in our panels, but that big question that you both asked remains. Are we ready to have a 12-step type group in the masjid? 
let's call it substance recovery, whatever it is. Like you said, you said Ihsan, but any other name is Ihsan? Exactly. It's an Ihsan-based group. Are we ready to have it in our masajid? Are we ready to have the friends and family component? Because we tried. If you remember, right before the pandemic, this masjid here, who was a pioneer, mashallah, in doing so, attempted a first round at a friends and family group for those who, have, who are dealing with substance abuse. Then, subhanAllah, the pandemic came in and it sort of wasn't able to meet as regularly, and turning it into a virtual setting didn't work quite as well. But here we are now. Are we ready? And so that's the question I'm going to leave us with, and I'm going to kind of, kind of wrap up this panel and ask for your questions, inshallah, in the audience, if there are any, but also to see, inshallah, to really push forward the conversation, because I hope between what Muna said, Dr. Ariana said, Sheikh Rami said, it's clear that not only is this important, that we have a historical precedence for it, and that it can actually happen if we decide to take those courageous first steps. بارك الله فيكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم